So look, look how the beauty level, just by pushing one button here, suddenly halves. And I add myself there. Right. Okie dokie. Uh, hello. Hello. Welcome, everyone. This is the, the TOC show. And today we have a very good friend of mine, a very wise man, Graham Scott, who's also here in uh, New Zealand. So we've got the best time of day for this because it's 9am, um, but it's also the best mm -hmm. time of day that we can kind of hit people uh, all around the world. And when daylight savings changes for everyone, it'll probably get even easier. We, we find the summer here is, is, is much more compatible with the rest of the world. Uh, so today, Graham is going to do two things. Um, the first one is he's going to give you a demonstration of flying logic. And flying logic is a software diagramming tool that's a bit more than that because it's been built specifically for people to uh, to do the TOC thinking processes. So if you look at Ali Goldratt's work, he did a whole lot of logistical stuff, bottlenecks, project management, all that there. But underlying it all was a thinking process that he sat down one day or one year and figured out how he thought about things. And he, he came up with a problem solving, solution making and implementing process um, and the flying logic helps you do the diagrams here. Now, so that's the first bit. You'll get to see uh, flying logic. It's a very neat tool. You get a really, really, really fast uh, tour of it, a bit like watching uh, Top Gear or Top, Top Gun even. Um, the other bit is that if you watched in session a few weeks ago, he introduced uh, one of the new innovations in TOC land, uh, which is a... Um, it's called the Druid, and it's a, well, Graham will do a better job of explaining it than me, but it's a, a way of taking the conflict cloud and the current reality trees that are kind of like old school TOC, really wonderful stuff, um, old school TOC, and then building on it and just, just sort of kind of like speeding it up. And it's a really, really clever process. We will have uh, James Powell on uh, at some stage soon. Uh, he's kind of like the guy that put it together. Ian's the guy that's championing it at WiseTech and uh, hopefully yeah, further. And Graham is going to take you through a kind, kind of like a worked example. So that we're going to put some stuff together. Uh, Graham's going to guide us through that. And then like a TV chef, he's going to go, here's one I prepared earlier. So we can kind of give you a, a, a faster version of this. Mm. Now, if you were a seven or an eight, some of us, you'll go, oh, I like that. That's just adding on. You get a little bit of a, um, uh, maybe a bit of a, oh, okay, different to what I'm used to. If you were a three or a four, you might hear some stuff that is a little bit bewildering. Just, just go with the flow. It's like when I watch Top Gear. I, I don't know how to drive fast cars, but I can watch them. Other people do it. Just watch and enjoy. Um, and yeah. uh, and, and, and just, just, just learn by osmosis. Right. Anything else I have to say, Mr. Scott? Oh, just I think that um, there'll be time at the end for questions, uh, but I think you'll find that a lot of it will answer itself as we go through. He said, he said hopefully. Okay, good. Now, do you want to share your screen? Uh, and then yes. I'll get rid of my... Um, I'll, I'll stop spotlighting us. Um, yeah. All right, so I'll just... Um, da -da -da -da. Slideshow, um, just got a little, little bit of a slideshow as much as anything to keep me on track. Um, so, right, why are we here? <clears throat> um, I want to show you a new tool and just remind everyone how, how powerful this is. I um, want to explain a little bit more about Druids and why we need them work through the structure of druids and some examples, and then a worked case where I'll turn some druids into a CRT. So just right back to basics, a lot of us have been in situations where someone's come up with a, a solution and you're wondering where on earth it's come from. And two of the most powerful questions that I ask when I'm in that situation, one is, what problem are you trying to solve? And that usually makes people sit back because they haven't thought about it enough. And the other is, no, what's, what's the effect you want? And so um, what, what a CRT is all about is downloading all the issues into one place and seeing all the problems, how they interact with each other and coming up with a, a core issue at the bottom. So in the past... 
when we've uh, when I've taught this, we've asked people to come up with a list of UDs, uh, undesirable effects, and that has really been difficult. What we tend to what tends to happen is we get a list of obstacles, or we get uh, a list of things that are lack of solutions. If any of you have read uh, Kristen Cox's book, Stop Decorating the Fish, that's marvellous. She talks about the seductive seven. The problem is we don't have enough money, we don't have enough data, we don't have enough communication. And those aren't problems. Not having enough money assumes that the problem is lack of money. And this is one of the issues that we've had uh, teaching the course. However, people instinctively seem to be able to tell you what's wrong with something. And this was uh, something that Ian emphasized when he was uh, when he did his uh, talk a couple of weeks ago. And that, that for me just was a, a moment of clarification. So what a druid does, it, it captures both sides of the arguments and it allows you to see it's you and me against the problem rather than us against each other. And just the power of these druids, using druids rather than the old way of putting together a CRT, not two days off our uh, Black Belt and Thinking course. It's now a six-day course, and we believe the CRTs we're getting at the end are a whole lot better than, um, than they were using the old method. So this is the basic structure of a druid. We have, uh, where we, are, we have one behavior, and when we do that, it starts to go wrong. Then it starts to go bad. We get a goal violation. That then causes pressure to do a different behavior, and that goes wrong, and that goes bad and causes a goal violation. So um, I will just now go over to my... Other screen, I'm not quite sure uh, da, 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 which one is it, that one. Okay, so this is, this is now the Flying Logic software. I use this uh, when, I'm, when I'm doodling around with myself and in this sort of situation on, uh, when we're doing it remotely. If I was doing it with clients and certainly on the, the BBIT course, we use an awful lot of post-it notes and big bits of paper. And I think there's some real power in seeing it all spread out uh, to see all your issues on, on one page. It's not too bad with a big screen, but um, we'll work through this and see how it goes. So the, uh, this is basically the same as, uh, as the previous example just the flying logic, the arrows are, are in slightly different places. So I think one of the power, power of these druids is that it, it allows people to use the yes but. And I think that that's, uh, if you believe in uh, evolutionary psychology, this is something that's been with us for thousands and thousands of years. It's what's kept our genes alive. So if Clark and I were cavemen, and we were standing around outside and I said to Clark, hey, let's go and throw rocks at that saber-toothed tiger. Clark would say, He's could, you, um, say could, could you zoom up a little bit? Can we, yeah, sure. Yeah, cool. There we are. Yeah, so cool. as soon as I make that suggestion to Clark, his first reaction is not going to be, gee, I wonder what the need behind that suggestion from Graham is. He's going to go, hey, but then we'll catch the tiger's attention. He might chase us and we might die. In which case, he's going to say we should not throw rocks at that saber-toothed tiger. And I'm going to say, yes, but then the saber-toothed tiger will remain near our cave. He might chase some family members and our family members might die. Man, we've got to throw some rocks at that saber-toothed tiger. And all we're doing with these druids is capturing that conversation. It's the conversations that you'll hear around the, around the water cooler, in the boardroom, in your own head. And it's, it's using this human instinct we have for seeing what's going to go wrong. 
Now, the reason I've got these off the other side is there might be another motive for me wanting to throw rocks at that saber-toothed tiger. Perhaps I'm bored. Um, perhaps I want to, uh, I don't know, lure it into a trap. I'm not sure. But there could be several other paths here. And part of what we need to do is get in our own head, um, you know, what the context is and listen to the conversation, not add our own content. Uh, just another quick example. Uh, my son came home from university. He had to write an essay about uh, whether we should force the developing world to reduce emissions or allow them to continue with emissions. And when we started going through the conversation, if we make them reduce uh, emissions, then the growth of a developing country is stifled. The developing countries fall further and further behind. The gap between rich and poor grows bigger and bigger. So we should allow them to continue with emissions. However, the economies of uh, when as the economies of the world continue to grow, there's more and more emissions and climate change is accelerated. So we're in this sort of loop. And for those of you who are familiar with clouds, this is this is the cloud. And if I just do a quick uh, control copy, if I put this in here. Basically, what we've got is I've called them wants here and their actions here, but these are exactly the same. If I take that to there and this one to here, this is how a cloud and a druid fit together. These are basically, these are, these are the same things. They just happen to be called different titles. This is the the needs, and this is what happens when it goes horribly wrong. So that's the difference between a cloud and a druid. And the gap here, the undesirable effect, the goal violation, is the opposite of the need down here. And the goal violation, undesirable, is the opposite down here. So keep that in mind, because we'll be revisiting that a bit further along in the process. Just notice that the gap here is on one side and the need is on the other, and that's what creates the, the figure of eight. Um, this is another one that I did with a client. He, um, he runs an avocado pack house, and he wanted to create a mafia offer for his customers. And the problem that his orchard growers have is on the one hand, they want to leave the fruit on the tree until late in the season because that gives them the best prices. But avocados are a funny crop. The, uh, the new season's crop is growing on the tree while the old season's crop is still there. And if you leave the old season's crop on too long, it interfere, interferes with the production of the, of the new crop. So the growers are constantly torn between harvesting their crop early, which means that next season's crop will be a, a good yield, and harvesting late, which means this season's prices will be good. Hey, Graham, could you zoom again? Yeah, sorry. Um, right. And just Thanks. wanted to move to this. Now, this is, this is the same... This is the same loop. What I've done, though, is I've added in assumptions here. So this is if, uh, if and then cause and effect logic. So for those of the, you that don't know much about avocados, these assumptions will help you understand the previous loop. That's also something that we'll come back and revisit a bit later. So... Uh, Let's see if we can. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I'll go back to the other other screen now. Um, so this is our our basic druid again. What we're going to have a look at now is the 
Um, the Olympics are on, on at the moment. I'm really excited about it. I don't think Clark really cares, but uh, we're the town <laughs> I live in. The moment you say the word. <laughs> Sorry. The, the town I live in, uh, there's less than 20,000 of us here, but we happen to have the uh, country's uh, velodrome and also the best rowing lake uh, in the country here. So wandering around town all the time, we see all these Olympic athletes. So watching them on TV, I feel I know, know them personally. Some of them I do. So all very exciting. But the background for the case study that we're going to have a look at is that uh, several years ago, or decades ago, the New Zealand government banned tobacco companies from sponsoring sport and they had to replace the lost income with government funding. The amount of funding each sport gets is based on their performances on the international stage. It's pretty cutthroat. Now, we've had some recent investigations that have uncovered a whole lot of bullying, mental health issues, and poor culture in some of these organizations. Um, now, New Zealand's not special. With this, uh, we've seen the USA Gymnastics has been uh, hit with this. Uh, Russia and their uh, state-sponsored drug scheme, you know, they're trying to get results and funding. So it's not, um, it's not just special to New Zealand. So to, to give us some druids to start with, these are the questions that we're going to look at. These are the discussions that are being had around the boardroom. Do we choose athletes based on their raw talent or do we, and, or do we get them on their, their work ethic and attitude? Do we tolerate bad behaviour from our good coaches? What do we do with our non-performing athletes? Do we dump them? Do we keep them? Do we dump coaches whose athletes don't perform? Do we hire coaches who are good with people or do we hire coaches who get results? Do we focus on developing young athletes or give all the money to our proven performers? These are the sort of conversations that are being had. So what I've done, uh, da, 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 I'll just go back to my other screen, back to Flying Logic. So what I've done is pre-populated some druids with a couple of these uh, choices. Um, and what we'll do is just have a look at, at how the conversation might go. So you can imagine someone saying, look, what we need to do is choose the best athletes. The problem with choosing the best athletes is, well, the best athletes sometimes have an entitled attitude. Well, this will be a test of my typing skills. And Sometimes these athletes get themselves in the media for all the wrong reasons. Whoops, media. Oh dear. You get so used to spell correct, don't you? For all the wrong reasons. And our organization it's a bad reputation, which means it's even tougher for us to get sponsorship and things like that. What we need to do is choose the best role models. The problem is if you choose the best role models, the best athletes often miss out. Our squads then not as strong as they could be. They could be. Whoops. Could be. Whoops. Oh dear, oh dear. 
um, and our teams don't get the results they should. So we need to choose the best athletes. And we're going round and round in circles on this one. Um, let's skip to the, let's have a coaches one. So if we tolerate poor behaviour from coaches, uh, oops, let me just get myself organised. Oops, yeah, what do we got? If we tolerate poor behavior from coaches, then um, poor behavior becomes acceptable. Um, poor behavior is uh, I suppose more and more prevalent. And in the end, um, I suppose duh, 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 the athletes, oops, athletes, um, suffer more and more. Could, could, Graham, if we, can I yeah. interrupt you there? Could, could that do. one there, the athletes suffer more and more, could, could there be other yeah. undesirable kind of effects, wouldn't there, like, um, that, that come Absolutely. out of it? Um, Absolutely. Like, like it looks like very similar yeah. to the, the one our organisation gets a bad reputation. I can kind of feel like yeah. it would end up with that as well. How do you handle that? Do, do you just come to that later? It's, it's one of those things that as, as you go through, you start to see themes. Mm -hmm. And that's very much what we're looking for. One of, one of the difficulties that um, we encountered early on when we brought this process to the, to the BBIT is that for some reason our students felt that all these had to be completely different and completely independent. Mm. And that's not the case at all. Right. Because there's a core conflict under here somewhere, it's likely that these will converge. Well, they will converge at some stage. Right. So we are actually looking for patterns without trying to force them too early in the process. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So I'm starting to feel the patterns is, what, is, is what's going on in my head. Uh, and, good, and, good. Yeah, and that's a good time, sign. That'll get much, much easier. So you, okay, cool. I'm with you. Lovely. Thank you. Yep. Okay, um, and so if we do discipline poor behaviour from coaches, then, I mean, there's some of these coaches out there, they've made a career out of yelling and screaming at people. They don't know any other way. So the coaches, oops, uh, coaches lose, and I'll call it tools, and which means the coaches uh, become less effective. Mm. And the ath athletes don't perform as well. Nice. So we, we yeah, started. So tell me about the pattern you're starting to see, Clark. Cool. Yeah, so I'm seeing that. Um, oh, I wish I could, I probably could draw on your screen, but the, the one that you've highlighted there on the far right yeah. looks very similar to the second from the left. Our teams don't get the results they should. Yeah. Um, and it maybe even is the one just below it that it's actually very, more, more close to. Oh, yeah. That shocking spelling. Dear, oh, dear. Oops. It gets worse when you fix it. <laughs> no, doesn't it, though? Okay. It's pretty interesting. Keep, keep going, keep going. Okay, so um, let's, let's try one more. Now, do we, if we keep the non-performing athletes in the program, uh, yeah, let me just 
check my, my cheat notes on the side. Right, okay. So if we keep, obviously there's limited funding. So if we keep the non-performing athletes in the program, there's less room for up and coming athletes. Competition between the uh, with competition between competition within the squads is less, and funnily enough, we're coming up back to this athletes. Athletes don't perform as well as they should. However, if we drop them from the squad, then there's increased, increased pressure on the athletes to keep training. Um, the athletes start training injured mm. or sick. Oops. And then we have athletes suffer from loss of physical and mental health. Oh, excuse the spelling uh, once again. So again, there's, there's, this, there's this pattern starting to form of athlete welfare on one side versus performance on the other. So I think at this stage, we'll, what we'll do is there were on back on the on the PowerPoint slide there were six of these dilemmas that we were looking at. This is three of them that we've kind of built from scratch. So what I'm going to do is now just do a copy and paste to, to one I prepared earlier. And so this is uh, what do I need to bring across? So this is one that um, that we haven't got. Focus on developing young athletes or focus on our existing high performance athletes. So we'll just take this across and put it here. And we, what were the other ones? This is another one. Do we hire coaches? based on results, oops, or do we hire them based on whether they work well with people? Uh, and then our last one. Oh. Do we keep the coaches on when their athletes don't perform or do we sack them? And there's an old joke that there's only two sort of cut sorts of coaches, those that have been sacked and those that are about to be sacked. Okay, so what we're going to do from here, we've now got our set of druids. We are reasonably happy with, with how they look. We're starting to see some patterns. If we were doing this in, in a classroom setting or if I was doing this with clients we would have these in post-it notes laid out on A4 bits of paper or letter sized paper if you're American we would then cut them vertically down the middle and start to organize them and we're organizing them based on the themes that we're seeing across the top here so our teams don't get the results athletes don't perform as well as they could. So let's just take this one and drag it over here. 
and organisation gets a bad reputation, athletes suffering from loss of health. We'll just take that, that one over here. Now, that's one of the things about flying logic is that they tend to move around the screen a bit, which is a little bit uh, frustrating at times. Um, now, we go to this one, athletes don't perform as well, and health and well-being. So this one looks like it belongs over here. This one looks like it belongs with, the, with this one here. Oops, now what have we done here? Uh, we might want that going to there. And we can get rid of that one now. So this is athletes not performing well. So this needs to go over ben, to I here. Just for this one, would yeah. you mind, just, just for clarity, just, just talk yeah. through slowly your thinking. Could you control Z? And then just yeah. say what we, what Ooh, you're what thinking. Go, are ah, that matches? Okay, right. So let me just blow this one up a bit. So I'm, I'm looking at at this druid here, focusing yep. on developing our young athletes. Focus on existing high performing athletes. Mm -hmm. So on this branch, we've got. It's about a performance thing. This is more about the athletes uh, suffering. It's, a, it's a, perhaps a poor culture thing. It's mm -hmm. bad for our reputation. So what I'm... This the one's about kind of like where, the business value of it, if, if you like, about the, hey, look, if we're performing, it's a bad business thing. But then um, the employee, to, 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 to take it from a different world, is yes. like the person who's yep. suffering. Yeah, so you're looking for patterns that are like that, that. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, the same patterns that you were starting to notice when we put mm -hmm. the druids together. So this, this one here uh, feels like it belongs here. And this one feels it's about performing, and we're starting to gather the performing ones over on this here and then we can just get rid of that so the same with this this is a, a performance one so or a non-performance one i should probably say and this one is again that mental health that employee suffering and then lucky last We've got a similar sort of a thing. We've got a performance one. And we've got our athletes suffering. So I'll just zoom, zoom out again. And what we've done is we've gone from six druids like this, where these are all smaller problems within, within the organization based on these dilemmas we have here. And we've now split them in half and arranged them in, in two halves here. And this is, this is starting to get towards what our CRT is. We've now got some lines of, of logic, some pain chains in there. So the next stage Actually, can is... I can I just step in there just just for a little bit? Yes, to, please to, to do. My slow brain here. I think I got this. So there's like a stage uh -huh. where you're dumping stuff down. And, and, yep. and the stuff that you're dumping is the, the, the conversations where people are kind of arguing. And, and so and, and you're in those big... they disagree and there's yeah. a conflict. Yeah. That causes yeah. this circular figure eight kind of to and fro argument that, that never stops. Yep. So you, you, you're dumping them and kind of untangling all the stuff that's going on in your brain and, and, and in your colleagues' brains and just splatting yeah. it out there. Uh, and then you go through like a, um, an untangling thing uh, where you just get them and clarify them. I can see what's going on. And then when you split them into two halves, you were, you were kind of like stepping back and going, ah, there's, 
there's, there's, there's underlying all this, there's, there's clearly two sides to this thing. Uh, and all of the ones yeah. that we're looking at are symptoms of this conflict where there's, there's two sides. And then you're just splitting them out. And that's got you to the stage where you've got a left side uh, and a right side. Uh, and then you're yeah. about to do something else after that. Cool. Abs absolutely. Um, okay. Now, it, it doesn't always come out as cleanly as this. Uh, sometimes you'll get, uh, or often what happens is one side is very clear and then you'll get some, some that just, some, they, they don't go quite together. At that stage, you might have to rewind. And if you remember, I mentioned when we were talking about saber-toothed tigers that sometimes there's another motivation. Yes. Yep. And sometimes you need to revisit that. Uh, and just see if there's another reason that makes a bit more sense because you're building up your intuition about the problem as you go through it. Mm -hmm. And you might start to see patterns that mean you, you need to go back and revisit some of the druids. Lovely. Lovely. That's okay. really interesting. Okay. Uh, well, I think so. Um, uh, da -da -da. Effects based planning. Right. So, what I want to do now is just have a look through here. And there are some of these that are quite similar. So it makes sense to just um, bring all these together. And then I can get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Um, we can perhaps, perhaps leave that one there. Um, actually, maybe that's, maybe that's similar enough. And we'll just get rid of that. And then we need perhaps something that'll bring these together. Now, when I was working through this with, um, with the inside person, um, we have a toxic culture. This was what they felt brought these two together. So what, what we've done here is just go another level up to bring everything together. Does that, that make sense to you, Kayak? Yeah, yeah. I presume you could all, could have also um, you could have put something in between them that, that joined oh, them. Absolutely, yeah. And, and add yeah, other definitely. bits and pieces on it just to to, um, to to clarify it. But yeah, that that makes perfect yeah. sense. This is this is very much a starting framework. So over here, um, we've got pretty much. Um, Let's pick one that I've spelt reasonably well. Um, <laughs> let's go to that one. Da, 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 da. That one. And now my flying logics move me around a bit. Um, that one. So, uh, oh no, that's not what I meant to do. That one. So we don't need that one anymore. Um, don't need that one anymore. Uh, we don't need that one anymore. Don't need that one anymore. Okay, so we decided that the, these two are still sufficiently different. So we'll something that ties them, them together. Um, athletes not performing as well, teams. Um, and let's something like um, our, um, we are not performing, performing, on the world stage. Something like that, perhaps. 
and we'll just bring that one in. Oops. Could you maybe zoom out now a, a little bit? Yeah, yep. Okay, so now what we've got wow. is got our two halves and we've joined things at the top. Now, the, the next, and this is also one of the shortcuts um, I think that druids give you, is the old way of trying to find the core conflict was to grab some UDs, three UD cloud method, perhaps try and look for some common themes. With this, what we're finding is that having a toxic culture we want the opposite. We want the opposite of that. And that actually becomes our, the opposite of these up the top here become our B and C down the bottom. So I'll leave those where they are. And we want a uh, conflict resolution need there. And need there and we'll put the common objective while we're in here and so what we want is the opposite of a toxic culture so if i go down here and say um we must have a supportive culture and down here, we want the opposite of not performing on the world stage. We must get results from the, oops, the world stage. So what we've got, when we have a supportive culture, it causes these actions, which cause us to not perform, which will drive us down to here. We must get results on the world stage, which means we do all these actions, which cause us to have a toxic culture. That's, that's intriguing. Can I, I'm just going to um, react off something that Ian yes, please. Larson, remember for everyone else, that was uh, a guest a few weeks ago, um, who's got a whole bunch of experience in this and a whole bunch of uh, software engineers working for him around the world. Um, Ian said that underlying all this, there'll be a, a conflict between quality and speed. It, it is a generic um, uh, kind of thing. Um, and I can definitely see, uh, and I know that's like really low, low down, you know, it's a really, really fundamental um, uh, conflict, but it feels like that need that you're editing at the moment would, would be the, um, would be quality. I, I, I'm not sure. Do you have any thoughts? I, I think the quality and speed thing works and whenever I've tried it, I'm just trying to match it up in here. Yeah. I'm wondering, Ian, if you felt like maybe it, it, it would be a good time to um, come in if you were willing i yeah I'd, I'd love i'd love to hear from ian um my my sort of feeling if if we were going to give them homes is we need results now we got to get them fast man we're our funding mm. it's it's important but hang on we need to have a quality culture we need to look after our people and and oh. just slow things down and do it properly that that, that would be my so, so if I were going to put a, a business slant on that, the, the supportive culture um, is, is supporting getting the best product you can, which I know is people, but if it's the best product, yeah. it's nurturing long-term. And Andrew yeah. Rushling has just put in here a comment saying um, it's sustained results versus immediate results. Yeah. And, and that feels like so the sustained results would be a quality um, that on the right-hand side, that would be fast results, which is actually... Yeah, is, is um, scoring um, gold medals yeah. now, now, now. Yes. Okay. This... Yeah. I mean, our our, um, our rowing team did particularly well um, 
five medals, three gold, two silver, their funding sorted for another four years. Mm. Whereas if cycling doesn't have some good results over the next couple of days, they are going to struggle. Yes. It's really high pressure stuff. So I'm just putting a common objective in here. Um, we have a successful um, elite sporting organization, something along those lines. Something like the All Blacks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something like right. them. Which have a winning track record over 100 years of 80%, right? Yeah. But you're absolutely right, Graham. I think the culture is the is the quality piece and the get mm -hmm. results is the speed piece. Yeah. Lovely. Because and, and it was very clear that it's the speed piece because you said those guys who the canoeing got a result and their funding mm -hmm. is fine for four years. And mm -hmm. I don't know that much about rowing, but I'm pretty sure you don't produce a world class athlete in four years. It's more like no. ten. Right. Yes. So they're funding yeah. for four years in order to get the result when they actually need to put 10 years of effort in to get to the place that they need to go. So, but they, yeah. so that's the speed pressure thing that's happening there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Um, and I think poss possibly with the All Blacks, they're not constrained by money in quite the same way that these, you know, amateur sports are. Um, they used they used to be, used to be yeah, right. Um, so they they've created this brilliant culture. They've created a, a you know a world class product, and and now they have no issue with funding. But there was a time when they pretty, were amateurs, much, of yeah. course, and nobody got paid. Yes, <laughs> yeah. If people don't know yeah. what the All Blacks are, it's New Zealand's rugby team. Yeah, and if people don't know what rugby is. Who are, it's a game played by New Zealanders and a few other countries around the world. I'll have you know we're taking on the Wallabies this weekend, the Australian national team. <laughs> let's let's move away from rugby quick. Okay, <laughs> right. So let's just just to round out just to round out our core conflict, which is this is sitting at the bottom and driving everything. So what we're after is in order to we must in order to have a supportive culture, we and we need something that's then going to drive these. So all of these things here are about looking after people. Mm. And all of these things are about looking after performance. So the person that I was doing, doing this with, who's uh, a, on the board of one of these sporting organisations, her, her, her interpretation of this, she said, oh, it's quite simple. Um, here, we feel, oh, bother. We feel pressure to put people before performance. Hmm. Whereas, oops, here we feel pressure to put performance before people. Hmm. And when we feel pressure to put performance before people, then we choose our best athletes. We tolerate poor behavior. We focus on our existing people who are bringing home the, the bacon. We drop non-performing athletes. We hire people based on their results. And we sack coaches who don't perform. When we're putting people before performance, then we choose the best role models. We focus on developing our young athletes. We keep the coaches on when the athletes don't perform. We hire coaches and staff based on how well they, how 
good they are with people. We discipline poor behavior from coaches and we keep our non-performing athletes in the program. So that is pretty much a very basic uh, CRT constructed from, um, from those, uh, those druids. Uh, if we probably need to put some arrows in here, now I'm drawing them this way, but really they are reverse arrows that complete the loop. And then we'll just get rid of that one and get rid of that one. And that's basically a, a fairly basic CRT. If we're taking it to another level, I would be going in and putting assumptions in around all of these. Uh, just like uh, the avocado example, uh, this one, no, not that, uh, yes, this one here, where all these are assumptions. Uh, oops. And the other thing that we could be doing here is to put some policies and measures in between here and here. That's, um, I'm just looking at the time and thinking that that's, that's possibly a whole uh, session by itself. Yeah, I reckon it's a very sensible time to, to, to switch to Q&A now. It, it, did, actually, do you, you feel like you've got the, um, the cake out the oven and you're now presenting it to the yeah. audience and, say, and you can really just slice it up and ask for some questions? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and I think, you know, again, this is the power of the CRT is the psychologists tell us that, you know, the human brain can hold about seven plus or minus three thoughts at any one time. And when you've got all this stuff out, out there to get it down in one place on one big bit of paper or on one screen just gives people so much clarity. And I'm sure that some of you who are watching who know a little bit about sport, and even if you don't, are starting to see some solutions just dropping out because we've got clear on the problem. Yeah. That's lovely, Graham. So, so if you like now, um, we'll, we'll yeah. switch around because I know that's exhausting. That, that was um, beautiful. Uh, and, I, and I know the animations in Flying Logic can sometimes be a little bit discombobulating, especially if you're watching it from mm -hmm. a distance as, as they move around a bit. But that was just, just watching that happen and, and growing that in the space of 50 minutes. And I know you prepared stuff mm -hmm. earlier, so maybe uh, two hours uh, uh, together. Yeah. That's really, really fascinating. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to give some reactions and then um, I'll, I'll go to the, the, the q and I, I think just yeah. to bounce off the stuff that you were last saying, um, I know that this is a, we, we always talk about TOC as being a systems thinking tool. I think that's system seeing. Um, it's helping us see the mm -hmm. system. It's helping us see what's yeah. actually going on. And if you look at systems seeing um, 1.0, that, that might have been sitting down and writing a, a nice report, um, uh, well structured report with well structured thinking. This is like a T, mm -hmm. 2D version of it. It's like, so it, it's, um, yeah. it's systems thinking. Uh, version two and I, I love that it lifts it up and, and, and just you can just see the big picture um, and mm. but the intriguing thing is that you get there um, by just adding all the little bits of the uh, the little picture uh, as, as you go along. Yeah it, you, you're building it very much from from the base up and I think especially if you're working with someone else you need to remember it's their story it's their words as much as possible Yes. and you're just providing the tools and framework, if it is your own work, then it's probably even easier to put together. And just, um, I think, especially when you're building druids, just be patient. See what the patterns start coming out. Mm. Go back, rework, rewind. Um, it's, it's not as linear a process as I've made it look today. Yeah, this, this is the cookery show where you've got yes. all the ingredients lined up 
yeah. you've prepared some earlier, um, and then you're kind of giving a demonstration and some of it's mixing up the, 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 the cake mix uh, live, but you've yeah. done the baking off, yeah. off site. Um, and, and yeah. so, that's really important. I, I love the seeing this though, because then you can go away and, and carefully um, uh, plug away at this self, and, and you can sweat, and your ears uh, can bleed um, as you do that. Yes. Yeah. Tell tell me more about flying flying logic, to, or tell everyone about flying logic. Okay. Um, it's uh, I've had a look at a few different ones. Um, I'll just I'll just go back to the the share screen. Um, for a bit. So um, basically, you've got uh, menus up on this um, on this left hand side. So effects based planning. This I would use for a, a um, oh prerequisite tree, uh, goal tree, anything like that. Um, these conflict resolutions. We've this is your your basic cloud structure. Um, Oh, there is a, a slightly different prerequisite tree uh, menu there. Basically, I found it very intuitive to use. I tried, um, I did a thesis uh, on, on budgeting a few years ago prior to discovering this, and um, I did it on Excel, and it was an absolute nightmare. Every time I found a new uh, problem that I wanted to add in there, a new UDI, I had to sort of shift everything around and try and move straight arrows. Whereas this does it does it all for you as as you've um, probably seen today. It can be a little bit um, little bit frustrating at times because it'll rearrange itself and you can you can lose perspective a bit. But at the moment that's a that's a minor I actually Minor saw people detail. recommending this on a Mac um, Apple forum uh, that okay. I obsessively uh, read so I can spend money on stuff. And uh, yeah. they, um, uh, they, they were, the, the person that was doing it was using Flying Logic but not doing the TOC okay. process. Um, I'm just having memories of the BBC program where a, a, a two-year-old crawled into the room um, behind them and I see yeah. your son <laughs> wander by. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it could be worse. Sorry about that. That's but, okay. Cool. Um, cool. So, so the tool is really quite flexible. Yeah. And look, I've, this is, um, these are, these are, all these here are, are flying logic um, files. And I just use it constantly. Yep. Um, anytime I want to dump, um, you know, dump something down out of my head. It's um, flying logic is, is a place that, that works really well for me. Yeah. So, so everyone um, who, who's, who's listening along now, you, you can go along and get the flying logic tool and then do, do a demo, um, get a demo thing. I think it lasts for 30 days um, and, and yeah. you can just play around with it. But um, if you want to learn more about this, not, not the Drew process, um, but the general kind of thinking tools, some really, really good content as, as part of the help that, that comes with it. Um, lots of people have, have learned how to do, you know, some of this stuff uh, from there. If, if you want to take it a bit further and actually, I mean, there's one thing having a, a, a pen, um, uh, but it doesn't make you a writer. So you, you've got to learn the process uh, that goes with it. And, and whatever you do, try, try and do everything at once. Um, okay, I'll go, go grab some questions here. Uh, I'm just going to see what we've got here. Any questions is probably the best thing. Um, we've got quite yeah. a few comments. So Ramu has asked, can you adjust the font size of the nodes in Flying Logic? Um... Can I adjust the font size? Um, I'm not sure. I, I would say um, the answer to that is that it, 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 that's probably something you can just zoom in and out and just get the, used to it. It's um... yeah, it, it's one. It's one of those things where you know, for instance, um, if you put fewer words in, like um, coaches lose tools, you tend to get a bigger font. And if you put lots and lots of words in it, it tends to get smaller. Yep. Um, I'd, it's, it's just one of those things. Um, and sometimes uh, 
it's not as clear. It would be wonderful if it was spelled correct in there, as you can probably imagine. Um, I need that. Um, if if I'm if I'm wanting to, um, you know, sometimes I'll cut and paste these and put them in a in a paper that I'm writing. But sometimes it's easier to replicate them in in Word or something that's designed you know, to, to look pretty. This is not so much designed to look pretty as designed to, I think, get, get results and get your thinking clear. Mm -hmm. Cool. So there's a question here. I'm going to reword your question, Jorge, uh, from Argentina. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Jorge's asked, is this a replacement of the CRT, but with negative feedback loops? I'm going to actually... Um, asked. I, to me, this... This is just a slightly different version of a CRT. Um, a CRT should have feedback loops because it, it's this this CRT is is a one giant druid would be one way of looking at it. We still need this figure of eight in here. So we have a toxic culture. So we put people first, then. We go up here and we find that our performance is gone. So we put our performance first, then we get a toxic culture. So that's the whole power of the CRT. I suppose the difference between this and a, and a conventional CRT is, is that this is very stylized. This is very much, we had you know, 12, row, uh, 12 columns and four rows, and we've combined a few things. Life isn't like that. Some of these will need two or three entities to get the cause and effect logic. Sometimes we can get from our action to our undesirable effect in, in one jump. Yep. But as a starting place, as a basic pattern, which you can then build on and refine, it's a really great, fast way of doing it. As I say, it took two days off an eight-day course doing it this way. And for complete beginners, their CRTs are way, way better than they were in the old days. Yeah. Um, I, we'd often I wish come I had up this with, years ago. Oh, I just, um, we'd, I, I, I do love it. I, I love it. I don't use this yeah. um, uh, myself because I, what I've found, and, and this might be something that people find interesting, is that in my domain, I, I sweated and sweated and sweated uh, nearly probably nearly 20 years ago and I did my MBA dissertation um, on agile well, this is before agile but on, on software development and and I did a current mm -hmm. reality tree the old way um, right. and it was actually very 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 I found that it's actually several different times even 20 years ago there were several different ways of doing CRTs um, but I was lucky I had mm -hmm. a, a mentor who who took my um, stuff that I'd learned from a book uh, or several books, and, and he um, he helped me uh, make it just look so much better. And, and one of the things that yeah. wasn't clear until I worked with um, uh, this guy Jim Bowles, he was my mentor, was that every CRT kind of has these two sides to it, which you've got to very quickly. Yeah. And when you see the two yeah. sides, it's like, wow. Um, and, and he took me through that, and, and uh, he, he, he just showed me how to do this, but it took so long. But I, I don't use mm. CRTs um that often because I've been dining out on that one CRT for, for you know, mm -hmm. 20 years, that, that became my domain expertise. And I understood mm -hmm. that area better than most people because I've gone through that process. Um, one of the things that Ian said uh, when, when he spoke is that they've kind of gone through that same process, you, you know, and you guys have been training them. And, and I see the people when I'm working with the, the, the wise tech guys, they're using these things all the time. But one of the beautiful things, it's, it's kind of like they've got a recipe um, mm. and, and it allows people to go through and understand the cause and effect very, very quickly without having to pull it out mm. of their heads and invent it from scratch. So I, I think yeah. it's a really beautiful tool, and, and you did a really good job of um, making me want to do more of it. So thank you. Oh, oh that's, that's a bonus. Thank you. Lovely. Um, right. Yeah, well, and, and certainly, what, oh, okay. what, oh, sorry, just building on your comment about um, it having two sides, Again, that was a, a problem we had in the pre-Druid days is people would come up with all these yep. problems with one side and they'd have one or two problems on the other side. And you need both sides to be reasonably even 
Otherwise, you don't get that flip flop between them. That's exactly if one side's what I had. definitely wrong. Yeah, I, I, I had that. Yeah. Note. Um, I had a very software development centric view of it um, because I, at that stage yeah. I was learning about agile, <clears throat> and I was really just repeating yeah. the stuff I had learned and putting the cause and effect. And which is, and the daft thing was that I'm, I'm, I'm I'd left that world. Um, years before I was in the management world and I had nothing about it and when Jim pointed out to me that you quite often find that you um, the, the two sides of a cloud are around the management of, of stuff and I think your cloud's like mm-hmm. that um, versus the creating of the product and the people uh, and when yeah. he told me that suddenly I go oh and, and everything joined um, uh, it, it joined yeah. together but it's very easy to just be focused on your own world and I, I love that mm-hmm. your, your example just showed that really 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 well okay good so it's, this guy's got yeah. a question. Uh, yeah. I think it's got a question mark on the end of it, so I'll just read it out. Um, Bill Detmer uh, is building the gold tree first, which he mm-hmm. is justifyingly claiming to improve the quality of the CRT. Yep, agree with that. In this process, the gold definition is popping up later in the process. Could that be agreed early in the process? Uh, definitely could be. I think the idea of, of a gold tree is... This is what we're trying to achieve. Here are our uh, the prerequisites that we need to, to get in place, the intermediate objectives. And with that lens, you are then looking at where are we now? Mm-hmm. What is our current reality? And you've got something to judge it against. So it could definitely do it, do it that way around. So if we were um, navigating um, by a compass, <laughs> this is mm-hmm. the gold tree is your, uh, your magnetic north, and well, the north star, you can see where it is. Yeah. You're going to get there. Uh, but then the map is showing you the current reality tree. It's showing you where you are. This is, and yeah. then you figure out where you go next. And actually, a, a map and a compass is no good to you if you don't know where you are. Indeed. Oh, I like that. You're very wise, Graham. <clears throat> so yeah. your current reality tree is this is where we are at the moment you know that's where we want to get to what path are we going to go but if if you're standing lost and someone gives you a map no good it's like um <laughs> even using your um your google maps you walk out of an underground station and you don't know which side of the road you are or or mm. where anything is and it's quite easy to wander off in the wrong direction. Yeah. As you reach our advancing years, that's more common too. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I've I'm got a suggestion. I'm still blaming Graham, global warming. Which mm. is that we wrap this up now. Um, yeah. I, I, I think we, uh, um, but what I want to do is, could, could, could we just switch to, uh, to grid view everyone? And, and everyone, if you can, just, just turn on your video and just give a thumbs up and a wave. Uh, to, to Graham because this, this takes quite a lot of um, effort to prep this stuff and I, I hope you've uh, mm. learned a lot of it. I'm going to do the same there. Yeah. Um, and if we and then I've got some just a little bit of announcement. Next week we've got two sessions in this kind of world coming up on next Wednesday Thursday uh, and I'll give you a, a detail there. So if you're ready, just just a quick wave. It's not compulsory uh, or just a quick uh, thumbs up uh, and a thank you um, and. Uh, Graham's smiling yeah, uh, very well. Yeah. Thank you, Graham. Oh, awesome good morning, session. Warren. Very good. Very good. It's lovely to see you all there. Okay. Well, while we're in good group, I'll just tell you what's coming up uh, next week. Um, uh, so next week, uh, it'll be two hours earlier uh, than this session was, but it will also be recorded and I'll we'll pop it up on YouTube and all that stuff. Um, but you need to... Register for it if you want to, um, to get the the next session that we're doing. So the next one is with uh, the CEO and Chief Operating Officer of a company in Indiana who is at heart a manufacturing company. Or if you look at another way, at heart, they're an internet marketing and sales company that happens to manufacture stuff and they're built on TOC and they've scaled um, magnificently it, it's a just a, a wonderful modern world version of um of, of TOC being used to grow a successful company that sells in a, a wonderful product 
uh, and it, it's kind of like um, it's just they've just got a really great story, and they're lovely guys, and they uh, they they force everyone, which I think is good, to read mm. my books, um, and uh, the goal, and they they they're just TOC guys. Um, so uh, I'll give you more detail. I'll, I'll email you all out the recording and all that kind of stuff, but I'll also um, uh, come along next week or, or, or watch the recording if you can. Be a wee bit trickier if you're in Australia yeah. or in Asia, time zone wise. Um, but the recording will be good. It's just a, it's a really, really, really good story about people who love this stuff and they're actually putting it to work in the, the modern um, digital world. A, a, and um, but whether they actually make real stuff. So um, yeah, I hope you can all join along uh, for that. And I got a whole lot of people lined up. Um, hopefully, the CEO, the creator of, of Flying Logic, um, we're chatting next week, and hopefully he'll come along and just tell you a bit more um, about it at some stage. And I got a whole lot of really, really uh, interesting people. Um, it's, it's kind of and and just this is kind of becoming the punchline for this uh, or the tagline for this. This isn't your grandparents' TOC. It's kind of like the, the message. It, it's evolved a lot since the 80s. Um, and it's all built on the wonderful stuff that came out of the 80s. But uh, it just keeps getting better and better. And, and what I'm trying to do is just share stories so that uh, and, and examples of that. So it can kind of become more real in your minds. Um, and you can go off and, and yeah, and, and solve problems mm -hmm. that other people can't. So um, how about we have the uh, uh, three, two, one countdown. Um, and then uh, hopefully we'll see you all next week. You ready then? Okay. That's good. Three. We all reach for the uh, leave meeting button, that awkward moment. Three, yeah. two, one. Goodbye. Bye. See ya. And thank you for turning up.